Hello! So today I wanted to do a video talking about how I annotate. The reason this came up is because I was recently doing, and by recently I mean like a month ago, doing a live stream with my friend Gavin where I started a new book that I was reading physically and I was so compelled by the beginning of it that I left to go get a pencil and just started marking it up furiously. And in the year 2023, so far this year, I have made a concerted effort not to purchase very many books. Uh, I've been lending a lot, or rather borrowing a lot from the library. I've been uh, getting ebooks, audiobooks. Uh, I use Scribd and Libby and borrowing physically from the library. I've been trying to save money is what I'm trying to say. But this particular book was a new release. I knew I wasn't going to get my hands on it as quickly as I wanted to, so I went ahead and purchased it. Started annotating it and remembered I love annotating so much. So it's kind of reinvigorated this love of annotating for me again and I've gotten back into it and it's been amazing. So I wanted to talk to you about it because it's on my mind. But historically I have been an annotator for many many years and I have examples on examples on examples of books that have been heavily tabbed up and many, many books that I didn't even put any tabs on and just annotated uh, and you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at them. And I wanted to talk a little bit about my process, my system, in case that's something that you're interested in, in case you're a nerd and you like to see other people's processes, or you're interested in maybe dipping your toes in annotating and want to get an idea of where to start. For me, annotating is very much not an organizational tool. It's an emotional uh, response to a book. So it's a lot of underlining my favorite uh, my favorite key phrases or lines, uh, marking up my favorite scenes, underlining relevant world building elements or things that I object to and would like to argue against, things that I disagree with or that, that I don't think were handled well or written well. I want to mark those up and respond to them on page. Things that are exciting or thrilling, I react to on page. Big plot twists or hints, nuggets that I'm seeing laid out early on, picking those apart and theorizing on page. A lot of my annotations are, are me responding to the book, be it in a positive way or a negative way. It's me, uh, it's me physically interacting with the story as I go so that I'm essentially in conversation with the book. To me, this makes reading so much more of an immersive experience. It makes it more exciting for me. I feel like I remember things better this way. And I love to be able to return to stories, especially my favorite stories. If I happen to have found a new favorite, being able to go back and see what my first reactions were years later Later, or share that story with someone else and what I'm sharing with them is my fresh eyes while they have their fresh eyes as well, I think is something really exciting. But I also use annotation as a functional tool as a reviewer because I, as a reader, am far more interested in character development, character arcs, character interactions and relationships, as well as um, settings, books that are very atmospheric. I love trying to pull out and engage with themes themes in a story, but I really am not a plot-driven reader. And so when I read more plot-focused books, books that are really driven by the plot, it helps me to be able to, at the end of each chapter, just summarize plot points. I don't know if that makes me sound like a grade schooler, but it really helps me as someone who is not driven by plot, and therefore when I talk about books, I almost never give a plot summary. It's spoiler-free, but you know what I mean. Telling you here's what to expect the plot is going to do. That's just not natural to me. I'll talk to you about the characters, I'll talk to you about what I felt the book did, what I engaged with the most on it, but I'm not talking to you about plot points unless I write them down and can look back and say this is the through plot line, but I need to be able to look back at it after it's done, read the through plot line, and then be able to summarize it for you in a spoiler-free way. I cannot do that off the top of my head because that's not the type of reader I am. 
But speaking of looking back at books when I'm done with them, I love when I finish a book flipping through all my annotations and and pulling out the elements of the story that kept standing out to me, the things that I kept underlining, that I kept engaging with, whether it's uh, character interactions or if it's something that really grated on me that I couldn't get past, or if I don't realize at the time that there's a particular character that kept uh, evoking a an emotional response from me, but then at the end I notice that pattern, then I can bring it up when I discuss the book, or I can realize something that was really special to me and notice that pattern so that I can verbalize what it was a little bit more clearly. Because I don't tab books as I go, usually. Usually I will just mark up a book as I'm reading it as I see fit, there's no pattern, there's no color coding, there's no system in place. I'm just engaging with the book in the way that feels the most natural and personal to me. And then at the end of the story, if I love the story, I'll go back and add tabs and that allows me to revisit the pieces of the book that I wanted to engage with, which helps me to flesh out my final thoughts on the book better at the end, as well as allows me to figure out some sort of system if I were to want that, which I usually don't. There are plenty of other annotation videos out there on YouTube, so I do recommend checking out more of those if my system doesn't sound compatible to you, because there are many that are very color-coded, that are very organized and precise, that have a system in place, that are are very, very intentional and thought out before the first page is turned. That's just not what works for me. What works for me is to just go into a book and interact with it and engage with it as I go along and then at the end see how that all looks with the exception of writing plot points at the end of a chapter that's really helpful for me <laughs> because of the type of reader that I am. So really quick, a couple of practical things that I do to make annotating a more functional tool for me. It seems like every annotating video on the internet has their favorite annotating tools. Um, I use sticky notes and a pencil. And the type of sticky notes and pencils I use are whatever is on sale or available to me at the time. But for me, annotating is not gonna be an expensive hobby. It's not something that I'm gonna spend time on. So I buy the cheapest things possible because what does it matter? My books don't even sit on the shelf in a way that you can even see that they've, they've been marked up. That might not be right for you. Again, a lot of videos online talk about the brand and the type that is the most beautiful or functional for the purposes that they want it to serve. For me, we are doing very basic things. Because while I love the way a book looks after it's been marked up, it's only me that's gonna see it more than likely unless I'm lending my books out, which I do occasionally. But also I really like a uh, more uh, haphazard, worn sort of look for books. I like broken spines. I like dog-eared pages. I like written on pages. I like for a book to look read. And I know that's not popular on booktube. <laughs> Keeping books in pristine condition is definitely something that a lot of people love and that is awesome for you if that's you. But I like my books to look like they have been read and reread. And almost every book I purchase I buy secondhand anyway, so it already is it already has broken spines, dog-eared pages, library labels on them. Like, they're already worn, so it only feels natural for me to put my mark on them, too. If I'm borrowing a book from the library and it's a book that I genuinely think I might love and want to purchase my own copy of eventually, but I'm not sure, I'm not ready to commit yet, using sticky notes is awesome for that because all of my notes are on, or, or things that I want to underline, quotes that I want to underline, I can put on a sticky note and put it in the library book. And if I get to the end of the book, I realize I don't love this book and I don't want to own it for my own shelves, then I just take off the sticky notes and I move on with my life. They go in the bin, we all move on. If it's a book that I love, then I'll purchase a copy of my own and then move all the sticky notes over to the new copy and then return the library book. The library book isn't damaged. This doesn't keep me from using the library and still be able to annotate. I have books that I've read and reread 
and reread again. I have books that I've loved and written my own thoughts in, then passed on to friends, and then they write in a different color, and we're sort of interacting with each other's notes and having a conversation on page. Then when the book is returned, I read over my friend's notes, pass it on to another friend maybe, and it's just a book that we all collaboratively discuss in, which I think is really special. I even have books that I was so desperate to underline something in, but I didn't have a pencil on me, so I grabbed my daughter's crayon and underlined in that. And the fact that it was a Discworld book feels the most appropriate. And I know that'll make some people cringe, but again, for me, writing in books that I love is like putting a piece of me in the story. It's like interacting with the story and it's creating memories. It means I can return to any of my favorite books, quickly pick out notes or uh, memories that I have loved without having to reread the whole book. I can just revisit my favorite scenes or my favorite quotes. And something like that, which may seem like an offense to a lot of people, to me, it reminds me that I was on a plane ride home from a really special vacation that I really loved, reading a book that was really special to me, and I used my daughter's crayon, which is a a piece of time that won't always be there. My daughter won't always care about crayons. So that's special to me. It's a memory that's locked into that book now that I never will lose. And it's a book that I loved, so I'm happy now that I have a family attachment to it as well. And someday when I pass on my Discworld books to my kids and they see this atrocity <laughs> of, of crayon markings on it, I can tell them the story. We were on our way back from Puerto Rico. This was your first time in Puerto Rico. And this was your crayon that marked my favorite parts. I also really like taking some of my favorite quotes from a book that I think kind of, uh, capture what the main theme or the main takeaway for me from that book was. I like writing them in the uh, cover page of a book if it's something that I really loved. That means that if I want to look back at the book or I want to remember some of the, the key points or key phrases, key uh, quotes, I can easily, I know exactly where it is and I can look at it from a glance, but it also just makes it special when I go back and reread Born, which I will do probably at the end of this month, honestly, <laughs> I can just, uh, I open the first page and then right there, memories are there, affection is there, my response to the book, my engagement with the book is right there from the start. Reading is something that's really special to me. Reading is something that really engages my mind and my heart and my emotions. And reflecting that back at the book is something that makes that book more special to me. Now, the one big downside to annotating is that my library takes donations. I know not every library does, but mine does. And when I purchase a book um, secondhand or new that doesn't work for me, I like to put it in the hands of someone who may be more likely to enjoy it. Or if it's owned by the library, many hands. But if I've marked the book up, I obviously can't do that. So that's why sticky tabs work great for me. Uh, Post-it notes work, well, I use an off-brand, work great for me because uh, if I don't like the book, again, even if I physically bought it, if I don't like the book, I can just pull up the sticky notes. It's no big deal. I do this for books that I'm not sure I'm going to love, books that I'm not sure I'm going to want to keep on my shelves. And then eventually if I find that I am loving the book, then I might switch to actually engaging with the book on page instead of on sticky notes, but in those early chapters when I'm not sure if I'm going to connect with it or not, I'm not sure if I'm going to have a lot to respond to the book on, if it's really going to engage me to where I want to annotate it, then I just... Uh, it, it's very low risk. But for my favorite authors, authors that I know are going to make me engage with them, or authors that I know, even if I get a book that's a dud for me in their collection, I'm still going to have all their books on my shelves because this author is special to me. Those authors, I just go straight to the page. Don't even worry about sticky notes. Those books usually uh, don't even have any tabs on them, regardless of how much I loved them, because um, they don't need it because it's all written right on page. There's no risk. I have nothing to worry about. Oh yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is marked. Oh my goodness, almost every page has some sort of underline or note on it, and there's no tabs, and I've read it multiple times because it. I knew from page one this is going to be something that's really, really going to engage me, and I was right, and now I have so many memories just locked into the pages. 
But I just want to add at the end of this video something that I don't do, but that I think would be really, really helpful for a good launching point to annotating books is if there is a book that's a little bit more complicated, maybe it has a lot of POVs that you're trying to keep track of, the kind of weave in and out of the story, or maybe it has multiple timelines that again, weave in and out of the story that you have to keep track of. Using a different sticky tab for, a, or rather using a different color for a different character or for a different timeline so that it's easy to flip back and forth and keep track of, okay, what was that character doing at this point? Or didn't that character do that? Or um, what happened in the last, what happened the last time I was in this timeline? Being able to flip back and forth to better keep track of things is a really practical way to use uh, sticky tabs or to annotate on page and just use color coded things that can help make keeping track of the story easier for you. For me, annotating is very much an, an emotional response and not an organizational response, but everybody's different and everybody's annotation style is going to be different. So annotating is really going to look different from person to person based off of what your personality type is, what, what you want to get out of annotating, and how much you want to do it. And I don't really think that there's a wrong answer. If you don't like annotating, then don't do it. <laughs> if you do, then finding the way that makes the most sense for you as a reader, I think is the most important thing. Because again, hardly anyone is going to see your annotations. No one, if you don't lend out your books. I love putting my books in other people's hands, so people are going to see my annotations. And honestly, I think that's great. I encourage people, if they borrow my books, I encourage them to grab a different color pen and mark it up themselves and have a conversation with me on the page. I like it. I really enjoy making a book read and worn and used. I think that makes the book serve its fullest function. For me, I engage with the book the most this way. I can reflect back my appreciation to the book, and because I enjoy keeping my books on my shelves, it's something that I can revisit, and it unlocks those memories for me. And because I have a system in place, that means that books that I don't love don't get annotated directly on page right at first. I can pull the sticky tabs out, and I can donate to the library and I still am passing on books that I didn't love without the risk of ruining it because I don't want it, but now no one else is going to want it because it has my notes in it. Anyway, those are my thoughts on annotations. What are your thoughts? Do you enjoy it? If so, what does your system look like? I would love to hear from you. I'll see you again soon. Bye!